Okay, thank you. Anyone else? What is forgiveness? Freedom, Free, freedom from what? Okay. Anyone else? Because these few answers have looked at my notes. <laughs> what now? Anyone else want to say something about forgiveness? Forgetting. Hmm. How, let's ask the personal question. How many is holding on to some guilt? Because you can't let go. I do. I've got one situation I can't let go of, and I give it to God constantly. But I want to share some things with you tonight. One of the top things that God wants to do as Christians are to forgive. And to be honest, this can be easier said than done. Y'all agree with that? Um, but the power of forgiveness is evident in those who choose to forgive their offenders. When we forgive others, we are free ourselves from the power others hold over us and release us spiritually as well. You just think about the burden that you're carrying when you will not give up on something and the power that that one person holds over you. Because it happens. It happens with me. Uh, every day when I think about this situation, I can't let go. And we're going to see where the scripture tells us how many times we should forgive. Does anybody know that answer? Hold on, Jane. Is that what y'all said? Okay. The word is clear that God expects us to give as many times as we need. I want to look at Matthew 18, 22 through 26, if you would, Joe. Jesus is answering it. Jesus answered, I tell you not 77 times, but 70 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle an account for his servant. As he began to settle, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had to be sold and repay the debt. As far as we're going right there. Go ahead. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you back everything. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him hundreds of silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Did that king do that to him? But yet he asked for forgiveness. So, did he really ask for forgiveness, or did he want to get out of jail card free? He didn't no more have forgiveness in his heart, because we're going to see right here. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. That right there should have resonated, because he had just told the king the same thing. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. Here, the forgiveness comes into play because this guy first, he's on his knees begging. And, and I thought of this with myself now. I don't know about you. How many times have we fell on our knees to Jesus and asked for forgiveness but turn around and do the exact same thing? We're missing the boat just like this guy did. We're no different from this one guy right here that begged for forgiveness but could not forgive someone that uh, was his servant there. It is not easy to forgive some offense, especially those that cost us dearly 
and can even cause us trauma. But our God is bigger. I want to look at Genesis. No, we're not looking at that, are we? Okay, Genesis 37, if you want to write this down, maybe read it later, 12 through 28. Who can tell me the story of Joseph? What happened with Joseph? Okay, to begin with, they had a plot to kill him. Well, that didn't work. They sold him. He was a slave. He was in prison because um, the king's wife accused him of raping her. God elevated Joseph's second in command to Pharaoh. His brothers were looking for food, and what did he do? Is that pretty powerful forgiveness right there? Here are a brothers, brothers. Now, come on, we got some family members we don't get along with, right? So what's the difference between Joseph and us? Why can't we forgive? Who in here has got someone in your family or ex-family that you're holding on to? I'll take that as a yes. Um, but here Joseph, they didn't even recognize Joseph to start with. And then he lets them know who he is. Let's look at the story of the uh, prodigal son. We're not going to read the scripture, but it's 15, 11 through 31. Here he went to his father and says, I want my inheritance now. He goes out and squanders it and, and comes back after eating with the pigs and slopping with the pigs and all of this. What did the father do? Go kill the fatty calf. Put a robe on him. Could you do that? Could you? Could you be that forgiving that your son took half of what you owned, a part of what you owned, and went out and threw it away to the worldly things? But yet he said, come home, son. I've been waiting. I've been looking every day for you. Are we doing our children that way? Are we easy to forgive? Or do we hold on because they borrowed some money from you and hadn't paid you back yet? <laughs> if you find that you struggle to forgive others when they offend or hurt you, ask God to help you do so. It's not always easy to forgive, but God gives us grace. We need to forgive others. If it is deep as God, help every day. If you're troubling with something, go to God. Not seven times, but 70 times. Ask him for forgiveness. Let's look at John, please, Joe. Or did we pull that? Yeah. As Jesus said, and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses commanded us to own such a woman. Now what do you say? There was using the question as a trap in order to have a basis of accusing him. But Jesus bent down and you're a little faster than me. Uh, started to write in the ground with his finger. Before we go any further, what do you think he was writing? What, Billy? Who, who did? The accusers. Is that the same thing you said? I think that's exactly what he was doing. I think my opinion is Earl Smith, and I saw it, and I took off running just like they did. I think he wrote their names down and some sins up under it. But when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And again he stu stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman standing here. 
Don't go any further yet. What did Jesus tell her? What was the last part? So he didn't hold this against her anymore. Do you realize scripture, and we may read it, I don't remember, that Jesus says, I'll cast your sins as far to the east as to the west, never to be brought up again. So if that is forgiveness right there, are we following the word forgiveness? Or do we bring it up? I know I bring it up. If you get in an argument with your spouse and you go to them and say, I forgive you, she says, I forgive you, next argument, what happens? Here it comes again. So you didn't really forgive, you just made some words. I know Donna does that a lot. <laughs> Before we examine that what others did, we should remember three things. Forgiveness is not the same as forgetting. Remember that now, okay? When God forgives, he doesn't bring them up again. Forgiveness is not justifying excuses or understanding why the person acted toward you or the way they acted. Forgiveness is an emotional response to the offender. Pardon deals with consequences of the offense. Unless we have the authority, we not, may not be able to pardon the offender, but we can always forgive. Matthew 6, 14, please. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now let's look at that from a different point of view. Let's read it a little different. And I'm not changing God's word because I said, know that it says, no man changes my word. For if, you forgive, for if you don't forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. Does that ring a bell? Does that make any sense, what I just said? If we don't forgive, if we don't forgive how can we ask Jesus to carry our burdens? How can we? But yet he says right there, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And that's what we have to do. Is Christian forgiveness a conscious choice, a physical act involving the will, or is it a feeling or an emotional state of being? The Bible often incites and answers to our questions about forgiveness. Let's take a look at some of the most frequent asked questions. And I looked it up on the bi oh, internet what forgiveness was, and I love these questions that it's fixing to ask us. Is forgiveness a conscious choice or an emotional state? Both? Do what, Jana? How do we forgive when we don't feel like it? I love that word right there. I like the praying, but the Spirit. If you've got the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, that's going to be easy right there. How do we translate our decisions to forgive into a change of heart? How do we translate our discretions to forgive into a change of heart? How does forgiveness change your heart? Well, when you forgive, you're going to have a change of heart. Exactly. You're not holding on to that anymore. How do we know if we have truly forgiven? Okay, let's ask, I want to ask this again. How do we know if we have truly forgiven? You have the peace. You can feel it. What about if you don't bring it up anymore?
okay? I'm going to quote you a scripture. Jesus says, I'll cast your sins as far to the east, never to be mentioned again. Should we bring them back up? No. <laughs> Not exactly. No. Exactly. What if the person we need to forgive is not a believer? Someone else? I think that's a good question. My answer to this is if you are born again and you've had someone that's not a believer sin against you, and you go to them and tell them, I forgive you. What if they see a little bit of that Christ you're talking about in you? Exactly. You need to talk louder. These folks need to hear some of your words. They're pretty good. Um, but I think we need to set the example of God's forgiveness by showing we can forgive others. Is it okay to feel anger and what justice for the person we need to forgive? Is it okay to feel anger and what justice for the person we need to forgive? So what what punishment are you wanting for those people? What retaliation? Yeah, what retaliation? Hold on. Deborah? What now? Exactly. Okay. Why must we forgive? Because if we don't, the Heavenly Father will not forgive us. <laughs> it says so right there. Yep. I want to read this to you. What does the Bible say about forgiveness? Quite a bit. In fact, forgiveness is a dominant theme throughout the Bible. But it's not uncommon for Christians to have many questions about forgiveness. The act of forgiveness does not come easy for most of us. Well, for most of us. Our natural instinct is to recoil in self-protection when we've been injured. We do naturally overflow with mercy, grace, and understandings when we've been wronged. Is Christian forgiveness a conscious choice, a physical act involving the will, or it is a feeling, an emotion state of being? The Bible offers insights and answers questions about forgiveness. Let's take a look at some of those. Um, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you have had against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, Colossians 3.13. Well, that's just one of the things right here. And then read this. We forgive by faith out of obedience. Since forgiveness comes against our nature, we must forgive by faith. What did you say a while ago, dearly, about forgiveness with spirit and faith? Whether we feel like it or not, we must trust God to do work in us that needs to be done so that our forgiveness will be complete. Our faith brings us confidence in God's promise to help us forgive and show that we trust in our character. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see, Hebrews 11.1. 1. How do we translate our decisions to forgiveness into a change of heart? God honors our commitment to obey Him and our desires, desires to please Him when we choose to forgive. He completes the work in this time. We must continue to forgive by faith. Our job until the work of forgiveness, the Lord's job, is done in our heart. Philippians 4, 6. I am certain that God who began the good works within you will continue his work until finally the finish of the day when Jesus Christ returns. That was Philippians 1.6.
I like this one here the way it reads. God honors our commitment to obey Him and our desires to please Him. When we choose to forgive, He completes the work in His time. We must continue to forgive by faith until the work of forgiveness, the Lord's job, is done in our hearts. Philippians 1, six. I am certain that God who began the good works with, within you will continue his work until he's finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ comes. I read that twice because I thought it was good. Uh, Louis Smeeds wrote a book of forgiveness and forget. When you release the wrongdoer for the wrong, you can magnify, oh, excuse me, a malignant tumor out of your in her life, and you talked about that a while ago, about dropping it and letting that weight fall off of you. Yeah, just let go. And believe me, I'm speaking to me as much as I'm speaking to y'all, probably a little bit more. Um, I want to read you first. Wait, I got to go to another page. Okay. We are called to love our neighbors and our enemies and pray for those who hurt us. What is one of the commandments that we were given out of the Ten Commandments? Not the Ten Commandments. So, if it's your neighbor that's offended you, or hurt you, are you fulfilling that commandment Jesus gave us? You have earned the law, heard the law say, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. <laughs> Cheryl. <clears throat> but I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, and that way you will be acting as a true child of the Father in heaven. For he gives us his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that, but you are to be perfect, even as your Father is in heaven. That was Matthew 5, 43 through 48. Any questions so far? Anything that's on your heart about forgiveness? Dirty. A little louder. I'm going to read you the scripture that will go with that, Matthew 6, 14, 16. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men when they sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Uh, Jane, do you feel like discussing what you and I talked about earlier with your mother? You want to just table it? Um, Jane was hurt real bad by her mother and uh, has a lot of animosity still toward her. But y'all pray for Jane with that situation because we've all been hurt. Um, we also forgive so that our prayers will be hind will not be hindered. This is Mark eleven twenty five, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, 
listen to the next part. So that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. Right back to what you talked about. Miss Virginia? But you let it go. I'll tell you a story that happened to me. Uh, I was eating breakfast one morning at Johnny V's, and this guy come. And I'm sitting there eating, and he puts his hand on. You the one that killed my cat? I said, fella. First of all, I don't know who you are, and you might better get out from over my food. Didn't know that he was the son of the man that lived next door to us. I didn't know it at that time. Well, it rocked on. His daddy wound up with cancer. Now, I could have held on to that, but I went to that house to help that man get off the pot. Now, what if I'd have held on to what he did against me and accusing me of something? We need to learn what forgiveness is really, really about. It's not about holding on to a grudge because we need to be careful how we do that because we've just read scripture where Jesus is not going to forgive us if we can't even forgive someone else. Yes, ma'am. I think, now this is me, there's nothing scripture, this is me now, okay? If I'm wrong, y'all correct me. I think at the judgment seat of Christ, that could come up. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it could. What do y'all think? She's saying that she's having a hard time forgiving someone that did something to her when she was a child. Will Jesus hold that against me if I never get to that point of forgiving him? Wow. Let me say this. I'm in the same position you are. I've got someone that's done something to me that I cannot let go of. Period. 
I have prayed about it not seven but 70 times times 70 times. I can't get an answer. Do I think God hears my me praying for help with this? Yes, he hears me. And I may have misquoted a while ago. I don't know that we'll be asked that question after rethinking it. I, I just don't know. I can't answer that question with a biblical answer right there. I know it tells us to forgive, but God knows that we are human, and we, he knows that we hurt because he hurt just like us. Someone else raised their hand just... On that one subject, is what you're saying? That we're not letting go of? Well, I'm not saying Because that's, <laughs> that's a broad thing right there. Hold on. Hold. Cheryl, what did you say? That's a mean woman right there. Sorry, y'all at home. Oh. <laughs> De- oh, Diane. Have you went to this person? No. We have uh, I can't. I was messed with as a child. Um, like four years. And like we got we can't come around and I'm kind of depressed, so I can't go to him and I don't want to meet this girl. I can see understand your position there. Dirty, you had a comment? Remind me not to make you mad. <laughs> Dennis? Come on, brother. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Deborah, you had a comment, Deborah. Hold on, Diane, Jana. Come on, I stand corrected. <laughs> we. Well, how? Okay, maybe I can answer that one. Maybe I can answer that. From the time that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, those sins are gone. We're going to be held accountable from the time we accepted Him as our Lord and Savior until the judgment seat of Christ. So those sins that He's talking about cast at east of where is in the past when you were a sinner lost and undone, but when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if I'm wrong, y'all tell me. I don't, look, y'all can't hurt my feelings because I've been with Cheryl in Sunday school. <laughs> but uh, do y'all think that way too, what I'm saying there? That that's the sins he's talking about casting east to the west? But if we repent of that sin and go to him, then that's cast. After you accepted it. Um, well, I'm going to tell you right now, 
there's a lot more than one thing I'm going to answer for. And I hope y'all not behind him, me to hear some of the things he might say. Who just raised their hand? Cast your burdens upon him. Amen. Dennis, I mean, uh, Diane. Amen. God bless her. Um, are you still are you still holding on to this are you still holding on to it like it bothers you a lot wow I think there's probably a lot of us in this room that have had the same situation that you're talking about and are dealing with. Uh, I think forgiveness to me, and believe me, I'm struggling right along beside you, uh, is letting go. Just letting go. Uh, if Jesus went to that cross to bear our sins and forgive us and take the beating he took for the forgiveness of sin, we should be able to, too. And believe me, look, I've said it a couple of times, I struggle big time. Oh, I was at the point, like Durley, I could have killed him, really. But thank God I didn't. Patsy. Did you start to say something, Roy? Well, to me, it yes, but I feel a double-edged sword right there. I do now, because wow, what a hard subject tonight, Roy. Go ahead and let me think of my thought. Deborah, did you start to say something just a moment ago? It's just like with forgiveness. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Well said. Well said. I hope that meant some sense. Thank you, Durley. 
you should have taught the lesson in that. <laughs> uh, any other comments? Really, y'all chime in here. I think it's good that we can openly talk and how we can help each other grow spiritually even if we're dealing with forgiveness of sin that others have committed to us. Um, I thank y'all for coming tonight. I'm not going to keep y'all to 8 o'clock like the rest of them do. Sure. Scripture that just come to my mind is, uh, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So let him handle your battle. Do I think God will forgive us for holding on to something? According to Scripture, but according to God, he's a gracious God that loves each and every one of us. Roy? Uh, Wow. You are in, well said, Roy. How many times have you saw churches split because of that? Because somebody didn't do what the scripture said. If you have a problem with a brother or sister in Christ, go talk to them. And if you don't get anywhere, take a church member with you. Let's go back to what Roy just said. One quick last question I'm going to ask. Anybody besides Cheryl that's got something against me? <laughs> Raise your hand. I'm just like, you're so Thank y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask that with my eyes closed, please. <laughs> uh, really, any other comments? I think it's been a good topic about forgiveness. I hope we can all learn to put things past us. And really, Earl, you need to seek God's counsel. Mm. What? Well, like Brenda said, when we let it go, we have peace. We're not holding on to something. Oh. Anyone else? Sure. Well, Diane brought out a good point right there. Maybe we're praying the wrong prayer. We should be asking God to take this away from me. Take the desire to hate away from me.
like it just got gone and I didn't even know it got gone. So when y'all were talking about it, I just wanted to raise my hand. Mm. We need to pray the right prayer when we ask God for this situation. You that he's going to answer it oh, amen. God's not going to come down here physically and remove something from you, but He can do it through His Holy Spirit if we allow it. Huh? Amen. Amen. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We have no idea where God will put them. What if to go along? What if God had called us all to be preachers? Who would we preach to? So He allows us to go down these roads of self-destruction. We do it ourselves. But are you teaching from what you've learned? We should. That can help us forgive because believe me, I've hurt some people in my life and I've went to them and asked them for forgiveness. Whether they did or not, I don't know. But I ask. Even the wrong I did my children, I went and asked them to forgive me for what I did. Uh, forgiveness is a great thing that you can do and that you can let go of what someone did to you. Anybody else? So an example was set, was it not, Roy and Deborah? So we need to learn from the example that our mothers or whomever did for us that set the example. Uh, I'm going to ask you all all to stand, if you would, please. Roy, if you would, close us in prayer, please.